Hi, Peter Maggs here. Like many of us, I really enjoy a good coffee. So almost a year ago, I purchased the Breville Barista Express. And to be honest, I love it. So I thought it might be useful to walk you through how I make my coffee with the Barista Express and talk about its strengths and its limitations. First of all, I'm going to make sure there is sufficient water in the water tank. After turning on the Barista Express, it normally takes about 15 minutes for the machine to warm up before you can make a coffee. I like to flush the group head of the machine to clean out any residue coffee that might be left over in the system. We're now ready to make our first coffee for the day. Obviously, we're going to need our favourite coffee beans and a sealed container to keep them fresh. I also use scales to weigh my beans. And I brought a distributor tamper combo, which I found is a real time saver. I've found just on 17 grams of beans is the perfect amount for me to ensure no wastage of beans and get just the right amount of coffee for my shot. I can now add the weighed beans to the hopper. We can adjust the grind of the beans to be coarser or finer, but I've already set it to just the right amount for these beans after experimenting with gradual adjustments. We can also adjust the grind to the exact amount we're after. We can now grind our beans knowing that we'll exhaust what we've put into the hopper. I use the distributor to evenly distribute the coffee into the filter. And then turn the tool around to tamp the coffee to our desired depth. The porter filter can now be locked into place in the group head. After placing my latte glass under the porter filter, I select the two cup option as I'm after a stronger double shot. Just on 30 seconds later, my espresso has been extracted and it has quite a nice crema. I'm now ready to make the milk for my latte. I definitely get better results with full cream milk and I make sure I only pour to the level just below the spout. When you turn on the steam wand, it will take 10 to 15 seconds before water starts to drip out, and another 20 seconds before it reaches full steam. This is a good way to purge the wand of any residual milk. Once we reach full steam, I quickly turn the steam wand off, insert the wand into the milk jug, and then quickly turn the steam wand back on. I try to add air to the jug early on and then lower the wand to get a nice vortex going. All the time I'm using my bottom hand to feel the temperature of the jug. Once it's almost too hot to touch, I know it's ready to turn off and remove the wand. And of course quickly clean the wand head. I swirl the jug for 5 to 10 seconds to hopefully distribute the foam evenly and then carefully pour my milk. As you can see, my latte art leaves a bit to be desired, but taste-wise, not too bad. I've already touched upon a couple of the Brewster Express limitations. The steam wand is adequate, and perfectly okay if you're in no rush, but you definitely won't be making a large volume of milk in a hurry. The milk jug that comes with the Brewster Express isn't really big enough to produce foam for two lattes. I had to buy a larger jug that I found a bit trickier to use with the wand to be able to produce sufficient foam for two coffees. I also found that after two weeks of use, the Brewster Express started leaking. Thankfully, Revel honoured the warranty and it was picked up fixed and returned within a few days. I haven't had any problems with the machine since. 
The strengths of the Brewster Express are fairly obvious. I've probably made more than a thousand coffees over the last year, and once you've experimented with the settings that suit you, it produces consistently good coffee that I've been really delighted with. Yes, you need to clean and maintain the machine regularly, just like any good barista. Given the price point of the Brewster Express, I think it's a great little all-rounder.